Welcome to Beat the Bookie, the only place on campus where you can actually watch degenerate 21 year olds lose money on camera as opposed to just on their couches. I'm Spencer Pierce and I will be the captain of our ship today. Our destination is none other than Greenland and I'm not talking about the country. Let's take a look at what big old John Needs did last week and it's not pretty. You would think for a guy that wears a detective suit, he would have looked into his picks a little bit more. A three and seven record led to 33 lost dollars, including his mega lock of the Golden Gophers to upset the Nittany Lions. Unfortunately for him and also me, Penn State played whack-a-mole on both sides of the ball and demolished Minnesota. Not great. We'll take a peek at our standings, and as you can see there, John Eads did the opposite of John Dales, who won $33 and sits at the top of the standings. In my book, Jacob Morris, Ryan Nelson, and Calvin Cristoforo are all off the hook, along with John Dales. A $6 loss in the world of John Eads's and Johnny Gadamowitz's is next to nothing. And Cam, we gotta talk, man. You, my friend, are in a world of your own, an abhorrent effort, unworthy of forgiveness. But that's why I'm here, because as Drake once said, I ain't Mr. Right, but I'm Mr. Right now. So let's get to it. It's the juggernaut that is the Ohio State Buckeyes against the unexpectedly dangerous Nittany Lions in Happy Valley. The Bucks sit at 14 and a half point favorites. And at first that kind of scared me. PSU only has to cover two touchdowns, that's easy. But as Lee Corso would say, not so fast, my friend. Remember just a few weeks ago when PSU surrendered 400 rushing yards to Michigan? Yeah, Pepperidge Farm remembers. Ohio State boasts a top 25 run attack in the country, so not great for the Nittany Lions. And oh, by the way, the guy in their center for OSU will likely win the Heisman Trophy. CJ Stroud continues to impress, and he just looks a level above everyone else. You add Jackson Smith and Jigba back into the mix, though he might be on a snap count. And this looks good for the boys in red. How about a crazy stat, you ask? The Bucks are 100% in the red zone this year. 36 trips, 31 touchdowns. So let's put 10 bucks on the Bucks to put the Nittany Lions back in their cage. Now to a game that might serve as a little more competitive. Oklahoma State in Manhattan, Kansas, taking on the Wildcats of K-State. Two teams on opposite sides of the spectrum after last week. OK State beat Texas in a shootout, while well, K-State choked their lead away to TCU. The spread favors the Cats at minus one and a half, but in my mind, that's only because they're at home. Otherwise, it would probably be a pick -em on a neutral field. Now, is it a trap for me to bet the higher ranked team plus a point because I think they're gonna win? Probably. Do I care? Not really. What scares me is that the Cowboys is their un inconsistent defense who's given up 31 points or more in the last three outings. K-State's offense is just as inconsistent though, specifically their passing game. Their run game is excellent, but that's where the Cowboys defense kind of steps up too. And at this point, would I li like to take the money line on the Cowboys? I would, but the producers told me that I have to take the spread. So Oklahoma State plus one and a half, it is for $10. Be on the lookout for this money line bet later though, and off the record, you might want to take a peek at the over in this game as well. Tennessee, what I thought was one of the most underrated teams in the country, has continued to prove me wrong time and time again, and now I think I might be a little too in on them. They're 11 and a half point favorites against a really sneaky Kentucky team. The game will showcase two of the top quarterbacks in the SEC in Hendon Hooker and Will Levis. Hooker, if you don't know, would likely be the Heisman runner-up if everything stayed in place currently. In a home game for the Volunteers, I think I'm okay giving 11 and a half points. And as mentioned, Hooker has played out of his mind this year, leading the Vols offense to the next level. Let's not forget about his favorite target, Jalen Hyatt, who over the past three games has posted a mere 444 yards and nine touchdowns. An offensive attack like Tennessee's against a Kentucky rush that leaves much to be desired has me singing Rocky Top all night. Take the Volunteers for 10 bucks and run. So we're gonna take a look at, to the C-suite, where it's a party. We'll put our eggs all in the same basket, and you know what they say, if we go down, we'll go down together. No need to explain much here. Let's move to some of my best bets of the week. I bet you didn't see this one coming. It's San Jose State against Nevada, two teams that I can almost guarantee you that you have never watched in your entire life. San Jose State is putting people on notice with their top 15 defense in the country. They have an excellent turnover margin, and they're playing a not so excellent Nevada offense, which ranks 15th worst in the entire FBS. San Jose State's game last week was postponed after one of their freshmen, Camden McWright, was killed in an electric scooter accident. The team has rallied around the memory of McWright, and on a Saturday night homecoming game, you better believe that McWright will be with them in spirit. I have $10 on the Spartans to cover this game. Now let's take a trip to the first and, spoiler, only ACC game that we'll talk about today, and that's Wake Forest versus Louisville. The Deeks offense is averaging, yeah, averaging 
44 points a game in their last two contests, plus has only been held to below 40 points twice this season. Last year, the human wild card himself, Molly Cunningham, threw for 300 yards and four touchdowns against the Deeks. I would love to choose a side here, but the line scares me because I truly think that this game can go either way. But with that being said, this has all the makings of an incredibly high scoring matchup or just enough to push it over the mark of 63 and a half. So I'm putting an Alex Hammy on the over. Out West, it's USC versus Arizona. When doing my research, this number stood out to me as egregious. The total is set at 76 and a half. Uh, unbelievable. USC averages just 40 points a game, which is also basically what Arizona's defense allows per game. So let's put our thinking caps on. We're gonna do a little bit of math. USC is a 15 and a half point favorite. Let's say they cover that number and we throw that average of 40 in there again. That means that the score would be 40 to 24, which is that 16 point cover to get the Trojans. I know it's a little confusing. I'm not good at math either, but this is a really long way of saying that I don't think there's a chance that this game goes over 76. If it does, then that just kind of shows the magic of Pac-12 football. We're gonna put $10 on that game. And lastly, it's not a pick that I love. Actually, it's a pick that I hate, and that's exactly why I'm taking it. Arkansas versus Auburn screams mid-fall barn burner to me, and I think this game really could come down to a pick em. but at the end of the day, the Harsonist, Brian Harson, is still the big cheese at Auburn, which is why I don't have the heart to take them. That and, well, they're also just kind of really playing bad football. Arkansas is not only coming off a bye week, but the last game that they played, they ran for almost 300 yards. Now, against an Auburn defense that ranks 127th, they should be able to rip off a, big, a few big plays, especially late in the game. I like this game to be a little bit closer than comfortable, and I'm sticking $5 on Arkansas to cover the field goal and a half. We're gonna keep the wallet out. I know, it's, it's a lot. We're gonna keep the wallet out. We're almost done. It's time for my dog of the week. And my dog, it's actually not a dog at all. It's a bear. And that bear, my friends, is coming to eat a little duck from Oregon. Wah! This one is one of the best value money lines I've seen in a long time. Let's start quickly with Oregon, who seemingly looks unstoppable after dismantling UCLA last week. Does this game not scream like trap game to anyone else? A 3.30 Eastern kickoff means noon 30 out west, and it's in Berkeley. This Cal defensive unit sits fourth best in the Pac-12. Well, sure, Oregon may trounce the Bears, but it's kind of worth playing into the trap a little, isn't it? That's what I think. We'll put a light five spot on it, and we can hope that we can put the W in D-A-W-G. No more dogs, no more dogs, no more bears. We've moved on to smaller and more horned animals, and that's the TCU horned frogs. I won't lie, I am wildly in on TCU. Sure, the Mountaineers have won the last four meetings between the two teams, both against the spread and outright, so not great, but that changes this weekend. West Virginia is without one of their best running backs, and in a game where they're gonna have to try to match the electric offense of the horned frogs, I can't imagine that they cover. TCU's offense ranks fifth behind Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee, and Oregon, all teams that we are going to talk about today. This TCU offense is killer, and their defense is mid enough to get the job done. Lock the Frogs in at minus 7.5 for $15, and you can thank me later. So I know what you're wondering. Don't I still have $15 left, and is this not usually the part in the show where they put together a parlay that never hits? You're darn right on both of those. I am going to attempt to bring Beat the Bookie all the way back into the green with one single parlay. Let's run it. Wake Forest Moneyline will kick things off. We'll throw in our USC under because I hate it so much. Then we'll get a little safe. Take the alt lines on Florida versus Georgia for the Gators to cover four touchdowns and take Michigan to cover just a shade under two scores. I know, scared money don't make no money, but we have to get there somehow. And to top it all off, the Cowboys Moneyline will bring us to victory together. I wanted to do it in the beginning of the show. Now we're going all in on the Moneyline. $15 to heaven, people. It's looking good. We'll recap quick, six different $10 bets to start off your Saturday. I definitely feel confident in those. A few smaller ones at $5 that hopefully we can hit, especially the Cal one that would help us a lot. Could be a big win. And the biggest one of all, our parlay and our lock of the week. I, I may be trying to play a little bit too much hero ball here with the parlay, but someone's got to do it. Someone's got to step up and it's going to be me. And that's all the time we've got for you today. Special shout out to Braden Reed and Ethan Frank for letting me lose people money for them. Special shout out to my mom for watching me scream in front of my TV for 21 years. Shout out to my dad for putting my last beat the bookie bets in and winning money. And lastly, shout out to FanDuel for not verifying my social security number, meaning that I am not a real person. But thanks for tuning in. I'm Spencer Pierce. Let's go win some money.